What's going on guys, it's your boy Tammeister. In this video, I'm going to explain some of the most important changes that happened in the most recent patch and also a brief guide on the new additions to the dungeon and minigames. Before we start, I hope you guys all had good luck on your Innocent Scrolls. My bow just recently went from 3100 to like 3700 weapon attack and I'm super happy. Finally, I got it back to a decent base attack range and I don't think I'm going to scroll it up anymore. One of my favorite changes in the most recent update is the fact that you can't fail elite dungeons anymore. You don't have to worry about anyone with full mythic items failing you. You could do 0% damage and still be successful in the dungeon. I'm excited to see these new changes because it goes to show that Nexon is continuously striving to improve players game experience. Another cool update is the changes that Nexon made to the Goat Leaf Shop. Now you can purchase Weapon Rank Up Stone Legendary for 25k Goat Leaves and 18k for Armor Legendary Rank Up Stones. There's also a new Elite Dungeon Sweep Ticket that you can purchase for 300 Goat Leaves which is pretty cool. As a side note, you should make sure of the purchase limit for each item. For example, for the rank up stones, you can only purchase 2 per week, so make sure you are using those wisely. And for the elite dungeon sweep tickets, you can only purchase 1 per character daily. Another cool update is that Nexon increased their auto battle limit from 360 minutes to 1000 minutes. So now you could use up your remaining tickets that you have in your inventory all the way up to 1000 minutes. However, you cannot use the 2 hour free charge if you're past 360 minutes. So you will have to plan ahead of time if you plan on using any tickets more than 360 minutes. Now we're going to head over to the new mini games that's been added. This one is called Beam Me Up. This game mode reminds me a lot of DDR or Guitar Hero. What you have to do is match the corresponding color to the color of the aliens as fast as you can and try to get a high score that way. If you do mess up and press the wrong color, your character will stop for a brief second and it just slows you down a little bit. As you land more combos, it will build up your fever bar and once it's finally full, you're going to have a fever buff just like the regular MapleStory gameplay and you're just going to quickly tap the middle of the screen and just get as much points as you can in that time frame. As you get further along, the aliens may be paired up so it could be a blue and a green or a red and a blue, something like that. So make sure you are looking out for that. Make sure you're pressing both colors instead of just one color. I find it easier to use your pointer finger and middle finger to quickly tap the screen during the fever buff. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of it and also comment what your current high score is. You're going to match the corresponding colors all the way until the time runs out and then depending on your score that's how many coins you will receive. These coins can be used to purchase things such as innocent scrolls, shield scrolls, shooting awards and mini game lucky boxes. The next mini game mode that we have is called Beam Me Up. The purpose of this mission is to clear the space pirate bunny which is that UFO flying rabbit up top and in order to attack him you're going to press the attack button and your bar will slowly diminish as you press the attack button. Once it goes all the way down to zero it's going to make you freeze, you're going to flash red and ideally you do not want to get to zero ever. You will want to hold down the green bar all the way to like a little speck I guess and let it regenerate before you press the attack button again. The space pirate bunny will focus one person at random, so once you figure out who that one person is, everyone else should go on the opposite side of the map and just spam the attack button, while the main person being focused should just be worrying about dodging most of the boss's attacks. I know it could be extremely overwhelming, especially when you see a whole bunch of fireballs being shot at you, but if you take a deep breath and just take it patiently, I'm sure you'll be able to dodge a majority of the skill shot and take as little damage as possible. When it comes to the purple flames, I believe it's really difficult to dodge these. I think you have like one second to react if you were to react to these skill shots. So don't frustrate yourself if you can't dodge these skill shots. Just try to take as little damage as possible so you could still survive this little stage and continue attacking the boss. On the top right hand screen, you're going to see the team death count. This is a total amount of deaths allowed before you fail the dungeon. So make sure you try not to exceed the death count. For my final update, we have Legends Return, which is a brand new dungeon that's been added. It's a 3v3 skill matchup mode and it doesn't require any equipment or anything. It doesn't matter, it's not paid to win or anything, it's strictly based on skill, which is why I like this mode a lot. For those of you who play League of Legends like me, this mode is very similar to that game, so I'm going to be making a lot of references to League of Legends. After you guys queue up and you have a 3v3 going on, you get to choose a character and you have 8 characters to choose from. 
Once the game starts, you're going to have four portals to choose from. You're going to want to go into the first portal and just farm the monsters you see as soon as you enter the portal. Ideally, you just want to be farming monsters and leveling up as fast as you can. But if you do see an enemy and you do have an opportunity to kill him, then you should always try to go for that kill. When you start the game, you're going to only have one primary attack button. But as you level up, you're going to unlock more skills just like League of Legends. As you get stronger, you're going to have more skills such as your ultimate. Every character has its own pros and cons and also its own sets of skills so make sure you play every character so you know how to play against it and play with the character. When fighting monsters you want to make sure you're fighting monsters that's the same level if not lower than you because if you fight a monster that's higher level than you you're going to be getting a lot less experience and you're going to be doing a lot less damage as well. The point of slaying these monsters and also killing your enemies is to earn gold for yourself and you could use these gold with the four icons above your gold. These four icons increases your stats, the first icon increases your attack, second icon increases your HP and MP, third icon increases your crit rate, and the final icon increases your speed. Your HP, MP, and experience is all shown on the top left corner so you make sure you pay attention to those stats. At the top center of the screen, you're going to see a scoreboard and this just shows how many kills each team has. As you kill more monsters and enemies, your level will increase and the more higher level you are, that usually represents how strong you are. So if a player is level 15 and you're fighting a level 5, ideally the level 15 will win. However, levels and kills don't necessarily guarantee a win. It does give you a much higher rate of success because you are so much stronger but you're still going to have to fight that final showdown where it's a 3v3 and the last man standing will win the entire thing. Above me you're going to see an orange hollow dragon and this is just an objective you will want to take. There's going to be 4 hollow dragons total, one responding every minute and the higher level it is, the stronger it is and you can get better rewards as well if you kill it. This is similar to Dragon and Baron in League of Legends. You will want to take those objectives because they give a lot of extra stat boosts to your team and it's just a good objective to take. Just like League of Legends, you could last hit the Dragon or Baron which essentially steals the entire buff. So it doesn't matter how many damage you contribute to the monster, whoever does the final blow on the monster will take the credit for the entire thing. Before fighting the orange hollow dragon, you will want to coordinate with your team to make sure you are all fighting it together and in the case that the other team does come, you might want to turn and fight them instead because it only matters who last hits the dragon so it doesn't matter if you did 95% of the damage, whoever does that last final blow on the dragon, that's the one who's going to be getting the rewards. Since I'm still not familiar with every single character and their abilities, a safer route that I like to do is just farm passively, try to avoid as much fights as possible, and just use all the gold that I earn and just put it into my stat points and just try to be as strong as I possibly can for that final showdown. As you get more comfortable with your character and learn the limits, you can then start engaging in fights. If not, then I suggest you just farm passively and just make the most of your time while you're still alive. In League of Legends, you get your OT which is your strongest ability at level 6, but in this game you get it at level 8. So once everyone hits level 8, that's when everyone gets their power spike and that's your main ability to kill the enemy. Your OT does have a very long cooldown, so when you do use it, make sure you're using it to its full potential and not just using it just because it's not on cooldown. If you ever get in a situation where you're very low on health, you have two options. You can either walk to the sides of the map, I believe there's health relics that you can pick up and that will heal you. If not, you could also die to a monster so you don't give any reward to the enemy team because a monster killed you instead of an enemy player. That pretty much wraps it up for this patch breakdown. Let me know if you're enjoying this content by hitting that like button and also subscribing as well. It will mean a lot to me. Also, you're going to watch me get this dub off this final battle as well. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.